In our 20 minute conversation with the YRTC's new director, we addressed many of the concerns that our reporting this spring uncovered. Chaos among students, staff security, and escapes so frequent that Buffalo County emergency managers set up a special alert just for young men on the run. Nebraska's Department of Health and Human Services runs the Youth Rehabilitation and Treatment Center. Staff pre-selected four young men for our interviews and we did not meet any others during our time there. If you want to eat first, get your bed made first. But this group argues the tough perception does not match reality. We just try and let other people know that there are kids here that are trying to do their best and that we can do good. The center's new director says he wants the YRTC safer and more effective. Now we're seeing pretty much all our youth are the high risk youth population we have here. In our past reporting, staff voiced concern. Some assaults went overlooked and unreported. The director tells us there is now a definitive red line. But to me, that threshold is as soon as you put your hands on somebody, that is an assault. And consequences. Staff say youth can spend up to five days under care in an isolated unit named Dixon. And we could not get inside on our trip, but DHHS gave us these photos. One of the key changes staff say is if a youth does go to Dixon, they focus more on reintegrating them back to their cottage before they move back full time. To help prevent outbursts, the director is letting youth call their families more often. There's also more focus on mental health, even the simple stuff. They're giving youth more food more often. Understanding hunger led to anger in the past. Staff analyzed when and where youth were running from the unfenced property. And now staff watch those hot spots. But for some neighbors, it's not enough. Really Elda Rogers lives nearby and garage. tells us police like caught an escape teen in her garage in July. And he had like a 10 foot long nylon rope in his possession. Didn't come from my garage and he admitted it. So in your opinion, Mrs. Rogers, is there any number of escapes that are acceptable <laughs> from that facility? No, no, I don't think so. They're there for a reason, and so I would say no. The YRTC's director asks for patience. Problems did not develop overnight, neither will solutions. But a key through all of this, he says, is accountability for everyone. When you raise the bar, you say this is what the expectation is, the youth will rise to that. But they have to have something consistent, and it needs to be fair. Ultimately, the youth we had the chance to meet want to raise the bar. I'm tired of having problems and getting, obviously I got in trouble to get myself here, but the way I look at it is, you know, I'm 17 and a half and I'm trying to put my childish ways behind me and I'm going to be graduating high school soon. I want to get prepared to go back to the community and I want to do good. I want to be successful. We spoke with the public employees union who tell us there is still low morale at the YRTC, still a gap in trust among staff and management. But the YRTC's new director tells us he is committed to changing that. With Andrew Ozaki for the I-Team, I'm Jeremy Maskell.